Hey friends, hello, happy Friday. Holy smokes, it's Friday, wow. Hello, hello, it's been a busy, busy week. I've had two new releases with Gina K Designs and I'm just super excited about them. I see folks popping in. Hi, Darlene. First time tuning into the live. Hello, welcome. I get so excited to see um, how and when and who can pop in. It's just super exciting. Hi, Heidi. Hello, Daisy girl. Denise from Louisiana. She says, I hope I don't miss it. <laughs> My husband is home today. Yes, I hear you. Um, hello, Gloria. Looking forward to the time. And Cheryl, hello from Kirkland, Washington. I love that. Oh, it's like nine o'clock, 9 a.m. in Kirkland, Washington. So my niece lives in just outside of Seattle in Washington. She's in the Navy there. So um, I was out there last August visiting with her. So I love that. Daisy, Daisy Girl said, I usually don't get to, to see the live. So it's fun to see you. Hey, Nancy. Row House greetings, Nancy. Hello. Good to see you. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Super excited to share this card today. I'm calling it the epic mashup because not only am I mashing up my two latest releases with Gina K Designs, I'm tossing another one in there just for funsies. So hello, Rhonda. Thanks. Everyone's popping in. Um, Teresa just popped in from Mesa, Arizona. Super fun. Denise said, hello, this is my first time watching you live. Hi. Oh, I love that. It, it's just so exciting to me. There's 21 people that have popped in on this live. I know that you have so many other things that you could be doing with your hour. So I want to be very, very mindful of your time and pack this live with lots of fun um, inspiration for you to craft your joy into the weekend. And I just get so excited because I get to interact with you live versus just posting things and hoping that everyone sees it. So let's get started. I am going to go ahead to the down camera. Hello, Elizabeth from Salt Lake, Utah. I just love it. Everybody popping in. Hi, Susie. I've been waiting for this ever since I saw your Gina K reveal. I'm loving the abstract shapes. Yay. 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 I love that. So, so fun. Um, and Donna said, this is my first live with you. So super exciting. Thanks everyone. Oh, it's just exciting. Okay. I am going to go to the down camera. If you're new and there's lots of new people joining the live, this is how I do my lives that might be a little bit different or my tutorials that might be a little bit different from others. So yes, we're going to make a card in the middle of the card. I'm going to be doing in the middle of the card tutorial, I'm going to be doing a watercolor tutorial. Today, we're going to do watercoloring with ink pads. So that's the technique I'm gonna to share today. Hi, Sue, um, and hello, Susie. She said, I love your aesthetic, thank you. So, um, so I do that, so, and then I don't show everybody on my lives the cutting of the die cuts and things. Some of that stuff I've had pre-done because I want to keep our tutorial packed with technique. So you're learning some techniques and there's two today um, versus me stamping and cutting, but I will be doing some stamping and stuff today. So I try new things, but I feel like this method has worked every with everyone for the lives um, so far. So we'll see. So, okay. Let's go ahead and dive to the down camera. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of supplies, but I do have a complete listing of the supplies for today's card in the description below. Um, so Denise just said, I need to practice watercoloring. Our watercoloring technique today is super, super simple. If you've caught any of the past lives or any of the past tutorials, we've done a few different things, but today is gonna be really, really easy as we just kind of move into the weekend. So, and all right, I've just got so much to share. I'm just getting a little excited and um, ahead of myself. So, okay, let's go ahead and go to our down camera. And I'm gonna do a quick walk through the supplies. Let me just move my cards over here. Today, oops, let's get the keyboard out of the way. 
Okay, today the card that we're going to make, everybody wants to see the card. Here's the card that we're going to make together. I am just so excited to share this card. This is an epic mashup of three different stamp sets in my line, but the Leafery. Everyone, you know how much I love the Leafery. And I just had to get this Luna Moth in. So let's take a quick look at the stamp sets. I have, we're going to be using Grow Through. This is new this week. This just got released, so we're going to be using Grow Through, and I'm going to be using the Leafery from this, this set. Um, I have, this is another stamp set in my line. This is last year, last year, or maybe a little bit before this. This is New Beginnings, and when I created the Crescent Moons in this set, it was really to coordinate with this set as well. So we're going to play with that. And this is the Happy Life set. I'm going to be using the Leafery, the Alstroemeria flower here, and the, um, the Crescent Moon. The Alstroemeria is almost going to be like a moon flower when I'm finished with it. So we're just going to have a ton of fun with it. Okay, so those are the stamps that we're going to be using. I'm going to bring in my watercolor that I'm going to be using is the Strathmore Cold Press 100% Cotton Paper. Now, if you're watching this technique later and you want to make the card, it does this not doesn't necessarily have to be on the 100% watercolor paper. You could use a Canson paper, or even many of you have shared that you like uh, using the Ranger watercolor paper. That works too. Um, I'm just using this one. This is my super fave. If you've been following me for a while, I love using the Strathmore cold press and hot press papers for my paper crafting projects. So that's this little piece I've got cut right here that I'm going to be using. I've got a piece of blue denim Gina K Designs cardstock because this blue denim is going to be the coolest base for the cool ink colors that we're going to be using. I've got some, here's my card base that I'm going to be using. And I cut that with my, um, my die cut, my die piece. I've got a, quite a few dies here. The dies are listed down below in the description, but these are two Gina K dies. Um, Daisy said, I love the moth set. Yes, it's the Luna moth. Oh, love it. Okay. Here is some Gina K Designs layering white cardstock that we're going to be using for stamping, straight up stamping. And let's go ahead and bring in the inks that I'm playing with. Okay. These three inks right here, the dark lilac, medium lilac, and light lilac are, <clears throat> excuse me, three new inks that just got launched on Monday. I'm going to take a quick drink here. Just got launched on Monday. They're in the kit. So if you've ordered the kit, they're going to come in that kit. But also remember, if you're not ordering the kit, they will come out separate next month. And then here's medium spruce, light spruce, and dark spruce. Let's go ahead and put that right there. Medium spruce, light spruce, and dark spruce. I'm going to be using those. Those came out last month, and they are available at GinaKDesigns.com right now. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in just a smidge. There we go. We're going to, we're just going to get honed in here a little bit. So those three inks I'm going to be using, six inks I'm going to be using. I have a jelly bean green because it's green and we need green for leafery. I've got wild dandelion because it's my favorite yellow. I only use it every time. I never, ever get tired of using it. I've got some embossing and watermark ink for the little Luna that I'm going to do in silver. And I have amalgam ink in obsidian. So those are all listed down below. And some of the other accessories I have, I've got glue and tape. And I've got these silver Nuvo drops because I'm going to be doing some silver. I'm going to be watercoloring today with this cute little water brush. I love water brushes. I think in our last tutorial we did a water brush. I'm adjusting the camera here for a minute. Sorry about that. Just do a quick little adjust. There we go. It feels like it was getting wonky. Um, so 
let me make another quick adjustment here and I'm going to pop this in so that you can take a peek at the card while I'm making this quick adjustment. Um, okay. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So here's the card that we're going to make and I'm going to step through all of the things. It's going to be great. So I, let's get started with the stamping. I'm going to stamp out all of the elements um, for the card first. But first we're going to start with our big honkin' crescent moon. And this is going to be our first technique that I'm going to share. I'm going to grab a piece of the Gina K Designs layering white cardstock. I want to pop that in here. I've got all these dies over here. I'm just going to move those dies. Forgot to share. We're going to be using some silver embossing powder. Super fun. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little technique for this crescent moon. My crescent moon, you can see, is already well loved because I already stained my stamp. I'm going to use my dark lilac, medium lilac, and light lilac. And I'm going to do a technique called, I think, <laughs> I think it's called rock and roll, but I always call this just layering colors. So I'm going to start with my light lilac and I'm going to ink up the entire crescent moon. Here we go. And it's very, very light. This light lilac is very light. Which I love. That's why I love these inks because you get some good layering. And I'm going to take the medium lilac and I'm just going to pop it down here in a couple places. Not everywhere. So you can see them starting to layer up my colors. Then I'm going to take the dark, dark lilac and I'm just going to, they call, they used to call this technique rock and roll because you were rocking it around the edges and rolling it. I'm not, I'm not so sure they call it that anymore, but maybe they do. Really, I'm just applying the color and getting it around the edges. So I've got three layers of that color, and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it down. Now, I'm not going to get a super duper solid here because I applied that light lilac first. I'm going to peel that off. And then I started to apply the medium and then I've got that outer edge with the darker color. So you're able to get this variegation of color and it almost looks like little moon craters too, which is fun. Um, and yeah, that's going to be our base, our die cut base. So I'm loving that. Um, yeah, Sue just said, talking about the rock and roll. It's back when our stamps were rubber on wood. They used to call it rock and roll. And I did start stamping back then before clear polymer was a thing, right? So, um, but look at that, that dark lilac and around those edges. It gives this stamp image a lot of texture and dimension without any height whatsoever. And everyone knows that I, I'm a huge fan of the stamp being the star of the show, no matter what we do with stamping. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side because eventually, when I'm done stamping, I've got, I've got my moon die. I'm going to run that through my die cutter. But I want to complete all of the rest of the stamping. So let's go ahead and start in with the leafery because I've got some little bit of two-step stamping leafery I'm gonna do here. Okay. Ah, Elizabeth, I love the color. Sue said, so did I way back in 1994. You know what, I'm gonna say like it was my first, I feel like some of my first wood rubber stamps are from the 80s. I don't have them anymore, but I feel like I used to do a lot of that kind of stuff back then. So. Um, it's kind of interesting how we all, how our stamping has changed um, over the years. Okay, I am going to come in now and do, I'm bringing in my sprucey colors. These colors, I have to say, are just so beautiful together. 
The dark spruce, medium spruce, and light spruce, these colors are more, they tend to be more on the blue side for greens. They're a lot cooler, not as warm. And I'm mixing cool and warm colors together. So this is jelly bean green, which has a little bit more yellow in it. So it's a little bit more of a warm color. And then adding that wild dandelion, which is a, is a beautiful warm yellow. Um, with that mix of warm and cool colors, we get a lot of contrast going. Okay, I just nerded out on color there. I'm going to take this stamp and I'm going to do my light spruce. I'm going to ink up my solid leafery. Um, Sue just said, I started with hot potato, big, bold rubber stamps. Ah, that you stamp on your clothes. Oh, wow. That is back in the day. Okay, so I'm inked this up. I'm going to do this twice. I'm inking that up. And let me just grab. I've got to, I'm going to clean this up. We're going to do a little two-step stamping. So here's my first layer. I'm going to go ahead and ink this stamp up again, just very gently. Get some of that light spruce color on there. I'm going to ink that up again and stamp that down. And now I'm going to go ahead in with the line art version of that stamp and do the two-step stamping right over top of it. And this time I'm coming in with the dark spruce. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. You can really see the ink a lot more on the line art version. And I'm going to do my best to line this up. Let's get this up here in the frame a little bit more. I'm going to line this up and I'm not going to sweat it if I'm not perfect. And it wasn't, but that's okay. I'm not going to sweat it. I'll pull this up to the camera and show everybody. Let me just get the second one stamped. Lee, Sue just said, Lisa, I have to say I love this moon. I think after this live, I might have to go order it. Oh, I love this moon. It's so fun and whimsical. And I just missed the mark on that one, but that's okay. So here's my two-step stamping. And I'm going to pull that off. Pull this up so you can take a peek. Doing two steps. <laughs> Daisy Girl said, doing two-step stamping without the misty yeah i do it all the time you know why because i love things being a little bit wonky so i'm going to end up taking these dies and we're just going to die cut those elements right out and i kind of love the variation of wonkiness the fact that you can see the two layers of color now if you have if you've ordered this stamp set or if you um have any of my other steps uh stamp sets where I'm doing the two-step. I always make sure that the that it does fit. It fits exactly. It's precise. It will fit. But I very rarely ever stamp when it's not wonky. So this is super wonky and that's okay. I think that adds a lot of extra um, dimension to the card when you do things a little bit different. So there we go. So we've got this going. Um, love that. I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to set my die to the side because we're going to move ahead and stamp out all of my other leafery elements. So I've got my big, I need a bigger, um, I need a bigger block here. I've got this other big piece of leafery and that's in this set right here, the happy life set. I'm going to go ahead. I want this piece of leafery to be, um, the medium spruce. So I've used the light and I've used the dark for the two-step stamping. Now I'm going to come in with the medium. So again, I'm getting that variation of color for my card project. And I'm, you know, the stamps are the star of the show. But we've got a lot that's going to be going on with the card because it's got all this leafery and it's got all of this variation of color. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that down. And I kind of, ooh, I boogered that up. Yate! Let's do that again. I kind of inked it up a little bit too much. And um, I let it sploosh. So let's go ahead. Um, that happens to me 
if that happens to you, here's the reason why it happens to me. Because I've smooshed my ink pad too hard. And you really don't need to. You're just really just lightly applying. Um, but sometimes when we're crafting and making cards, you ever found that you're gritting your teeth because you're pushing and you want things to work out the way you want them to work out? And uh, sometimes they end up putting a little bit too much ink in. And I did it again. So, But that's okay. We're going to run with it. All right, so I've got that leafery done. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to stamp the other leaf elements from the grow through. And I'm going to go ahead and do it with the jelly bean green. And this is going to give me, for my card project, this is going to give me a couple things. Another color of green. Let me go ahead and turn that this way. Another color of green. Ooh, figured that up. And it gives me some warm and cool colors in my project. And I'm also going to be pulling some of the leafery from uh, the Luna, the New Beginnings stamp set. And that's going to get stamped out on the bottom of my card base. That's going to add another extra layer. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces here. I'm going to run those through the die cutter. Okay, so I've got all my dies, my coordinating dies, got all my pieces. They're going to get run through the die cutter. I'm going to move this to the side. I'm not going to die cut on the screen. I'm just getting everything, my elements stamped. Now I'm going to pull in. Oh, you know what? I forgot one of my elements. Sorry about that. I want to go ahead and stamp out this Luna Moth. I got a little ahead of myself. Okay and bring in my silver embossing powder. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my um, watermark, watermark ink. Here we go. Let's go ahead and bring that in. And just go ahead and get that nice and juicy. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. So I'm going to go ahead, pop that over there, bring in my silver. I am a little embossed challenged sometimes because it, this stuff is so juicy and fun to play with. Sometimes I end up getting it all over me. So let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got that on there. I'm going to go ahead. I've done this one once off camera so that we can see. I just use my heat tool with the silver. And then I've got my pretty little silver Luna Moth. Love that. And die cut that little Luna Moth. Super cute. Love it. Okay. Now, I've got all of our elements stamped. I'm bringing in my piece of watercolor paper. And I've got my little Ostromaria here. We're going to go ahead and stamp that down with some obsidian. Now you could use the Misty for this, but I feel like this watercolor paper, first of all, it is um, it is a cold pressed paper, but it doesn't have a lot of texture. So it isn't gonna give me a lot of trouble when I'm stamping. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp down, give it a little hit there, and it's looking good. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and Let's just clean off that stamp. I don't always clean my stamps very well right out of the gate, but when I'm using obsidian, I do because obsidian is one of those um, inks that just kind of stains up a little bit. Okay, got my Alstromeria. I went ahead and die cut that so that we can begin to work with our watercoloring. So we're going to go dive in. Dive into our watercoloring. I'm bringing in these three colors. So I've got my water brush. I've got this little dish and this is just a little porcelain dish because I'm going to ink up, put my ink inside the porcelain dish instead of down on my glass mat. Now I'm going to start with the light 
lilac. I'm going to go ahead and just smoosh that down into my little porcelain dish here. You could do it on your mat. You could do it anywhere. And the technique that we're going to use today is wet into wet. So if you followed me before, we've talked about this before, but I'm going to go over it again. I've got my little water brush here. I'm just activating it, getting it, getting it going. And I'm going to just take my brush and paint my entire flower with a little bit of water. This is watercolor paper. It can take it. And I'm just painting the whole balloon with water. She's such a pretty bloom. Loving this. We're going to do a little bit of layering with these colors. And I'm going to talk about what makes these inks fun to watercolor with. So this is super light. I just added a little bit of water to just kind of activate that color so I can use it. And I'm going to drop it in and let the water move it. I might have to coax it a little bit. It's very, very pale. Let's go ahead and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. That's a little better. We'll get zoomed in a little more so we can see that color. And I'm just letting this color kind of migrate out. And it's wet and it's washy and it's kind of messy. So some of the reasons why watercolor feels intimidating is because it's people feel like it's wild and it just kind of does what it wants to do. All right, this is pretty light. And I want it to be a little bit more. I want a little more. So I'm going to add a little more of that ink pad there and just not get it so, so wet. But I want to add a little bit more from the center of the flower out. Now you could do this technique with any of your ink pads in your stash. You're just smooshing them down onto your craft mat and you're lifting them up with a water brush or a paintbrush and you can see I'm layering and adding more and more of that light color from the center out. But what's really fun about this, I'm just going to show it's going to show up more is you can start to see the ink pigments and all of the different colors that are making up the ink pigment. Now, what I mean by that is I'm going to bring in the original after layering all the different colors, <clears throat> look at the purples, look at the blues. They all kind of, because this is an ink, the inks are just separating a little bit. And we're starting to get like this glow, this super glow of color. And that's what we're, that's what's super fun with using the inks. Okay. I've got the light in here and it feels kind of, it's kind of light, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to go in with the medium. I'm going to smoosh some medium in here. And then the medium, the medium ink is, you can start to see as the colors separate, like all the different kinds of pigments that are in there. Ah, it's just fun. All right, I'm going to add a little bit. My paper's still wet, so you can see that it's spidering out. And I'm just adding a little bit of this medium in here. Now, you, you what you see is no fancy, I'm not doing any fancy kind of whooshing or watercoloring here. I'm just dropping color in and letting it do its thing. And then you can see how it's just starting to spider out a little bit. See how it's spidering out? I'm just going to draw a little bit of that out, but you can also start to see some other colors going on here. The purples and the blues and all of these different um, kinds of colors that are popping out of these inks. I'm just drawing this out a little bit to the outer edge. So using the inks, either ring inkers or your ink pads in your stash, is kind of a great way to get started with a little bit of watercoloring on your projects in any of your open line stamps, your flowers, anything that has a big, like wide open spaces. 
I'm taking some of that color and I'm pulling it to the outer edge here and I'm just letting it do its thing and I'm letting the light and the medium just kind of blend and mix so I've got a concentration of the darker color in the center and as we're moving out it gets a little bit lighter on the outer edge oh I'm digging it I don't want my outer edges to be super dark and we'll see why because I'm going to be stamping in some of the detail in the Alstrom area. I'm going to bring this up really close and you can start to see. Look at the blues. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so excited. My hands are starting to shake. Look. Look at the blues. You can see the blues kind of popping out of those, that purple. And we're getting that variegation of color. Um, and this isn't like just indicative like of these three colors in the Gina K line. Any of the dye inks in her lines are will separate a little bit like this when you add more water to it um, because they they do love the water and they'll do lots of different things when you add water to it. Okay, I'm going to come in here with the dark lilac and I'm just smooshing it right over top of what I did. Now, my paper is still a little bit wet. I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm coming in here and I'm going to to drop in a little bit of the dark color, the darker lilac in the center and just let it whoosh out and do its thing. Ah, oh, I'm loving this, loving this. A couple tutorials ago, we've, we've done this technique with reinkers. I've done this technique before. I'm just bleeding this, pulling this out to the outer edge here. Just kind of pulling some of this color out just a little bit working with what's there and also I am resisting the urge to make this a what I call a smoothie blend does anybody know what I mean by smoothie blends I'm resisting the urge to smooth everything out and make it all be like an even tone I just want it to stay with some variation. Oops. <laughs> Look at that. Variation in color. Look. Oh my goodness. Look at all. I'm going to keep, keep getting it even more close. Look at the variations with those three colors. I love that. I just absolutely love that. I think this is a big bang for watercolor. Um, in, in a very, very simple, simple way. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. It's not going to take very long to dry. While I pull in my card base, let's zoom out a little smidge here. I'm going to pull in my card base, going to let that dry a little bit because we we're not finished. I've got some more stamping to do to this piece. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little bit of my layers that are going to be in, on my base here. So I've got this star piece from the New Beginning set. I also have this leafery piece and this leafery. And these two pieces of leafery work, I'm going to show you, coordinate really, really well with that piece of leafery. So you can see you could use it to add to that piece or we're gonna use it as a standalone today. So Cheryl just asked two questions, so let's go ahead. When putting the cubes in that dish, does it contaminate the pads and does the water in the bowl affect the colors on the pads? It actually doesn't contaminate them because I did it really super quickly. So, um, and I don't have any problems with it. So that dark lilac one was the last one I did. So I'll just go ahead and stamp that down so that you can see that it's still like super, super dark. Um, if you're worried, I put them in the dish because I like to work in the dish and I was using a lot of water and I was afraid that if I used a lot of water, I was going to end up getting it in our project. So you don't have to use the dish at all. You can easily just pop it down on your craft mat or, um, silicone mats, anything that's just going to be a little bit away from your uh, working surface and then you won't have to worry about it. So if that's something that's concerning, um, just go ahead and don't use a dish. Just put it down over on the side uh, and just kind of keep it away from your main card. Okay, 
I'm going to, I hope that answered your question, Cheryl. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop my, this is a, like a galaxy of star stamp. We're going to use this as a little background element. You're welcome, Cheryl. Oh, look, I'm just trying to get it on the block here. There we go. All right, I'm going to grab my, um, this is already dry, but let's go ahead and move it over. I know what you mean about resisting the urge. I have failed plenty of times and gotten one color flowers. Yes, resisting the urge to make this a smoothie blend. See how as it's drying, we've got this really nice variegation from dark to light. And real flowers in nature tend to be darker in the center of their um, where their stamens are and they're lighter on the outer edge. So um, just a just a little tidbit also to kind of have some fun with your watercoloring. All right, I am going to go ahead and ink this up and I want to concentrate my galaxy of stars just kind of around this edge here. So I'm going to go ahead up and just kind of stamp that down. Okay, and I've got this little galaxy of stars that's going right up here. And it's going to help me with my positioning of my moon, my moon. Let's go ahead and take the moon. Now, before I get going, before I start gluing things down, I'm going to go ahead and glue my card base to the blue denim cardstock. You see that little schmutz right there? Don't worry about it. We're going to be covering it up. I've got some Gina K Designs Connect glue. I love this glue. Doo, 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 doo. I really love this wet glue. I used to use tape runners like all the time. And I just found like I would use more tape and I was going through a lot of product. I really enjoy using these wet glues because it gives me a chance to move things around. I tend to be heavy handed in a lot of things that I do. So the glues can... Um, when I was using tapes, things tend to get like a little bit too much, like I mean, getting the tape everywhere. So, okay, I've got that down on my card base. Now we're just going to build our layers up. So I've got my moon and my little galaxy of stars is helping me get my positioning for my moon because my little crescent moon is going to kind of just be dead center. I think we're going to go dead center with it going to take a little bit of foam tape and pop this up. Ah, I'm just digging this card. I'm not ready to let go of summer yet. I know that everybody is thinking about pumpkin spice lattes and, and things like that. And we're starting to see some fall things showing up out in the world, but I'm still holding on to summer because I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, I've got my little moon here. And look at when the inks have dried. Look at the colors. Oh, it just it looks like little craters in the moon. Now, if I wanted to get more of a solid with this, I would have used my Misty and, and applied it a couple times to get that super solid. But I didn't want that super solid. I really wanted it to have that um, extra texture and dimension. So I only hit it with ink once. Okay, I've got my moon on here and now I'm going to start to up get all of my die cut pieces. So I've got my leafery, my two-step stamped leafery, and I've got my crescent, my luna. I've got all of my pieces. Um, Dawn said this has been a great August. No smoke for a change in the great summer. Dawn lives out on the West Coast, so yes, yes. Okay, so we've got our moon, and now I'm going to put down my Alstroemeria, or I'm calling it a moon flower, but before we do, we've got to add a little bit of detail, stamped detail, to this moon flower. So in the stamp set, let me just go ahead and bring that up to the camera so that you can see it. 
in the stamp set, I have these two elements right here that go inside of this um, flower and it adds a little bit of that Alstroemeria detail that you would see in the real petals. So I'm adding that in. We're going to go in with the dark lilac because it's going to come up here in this outer edge. Let's just go ahead and zoom in so that you guys can see this a little closer. Okay, got the dark lilac. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up very gently. And I'm going to come in and stamp that right here so we get that detail for that Alstrom area right there. And then I've got that bottom stamp. And there's a couple places that this one can go. It can go right here on the bottom. It can also go on some of the um, side petals, but I'm going to go ahead and pop it here in the bottom. So we've got that detail happening in that flower. Donna just said, um, said I'm a sweater weather kind of gal. I love sweater weather too, but I'm not ready for the pumpkin spice stuff, even though I love, love me some pumpkins. So, okay. I just zoomed back out a little bit so we can get back to our card. Okay. Here's my card front. I'm going to put that moonflower down right here. But before I do, I've got these two pieces of leafery I want to stamp down to get a little bit more of that yellow. We've got yellow up here. I want to bring that yellow down, that wall dandelion down to this area too, just so we get our eye kind of mesmerized by all the different colors that we've got going on here. I'm going to bring that wild dandelion down. I've got my two pieces of leafery and I'm going to use the lines that I have here in my moon to just be my guide for where I'm going to stamp it. So I've got that line right there and I'm going to stamp that piece of leafery right there so it looks like it's an extension kind of coming out. I'm going to take my other piece of leafery and then use the other line, use that line going the other direction. And then I've got that, yeah, I just bigger that up. Look at that. Let's see if I can add to it. Okay. And then just, I've got these two pieces of leafery kind of going in the different direction. Susie just said, I thought that flower was perfect for four, but those extra details are such a great addition. Yes. A little two-step stamping adds a little bit more. Now you don't have to, but that gives it that Alstroemeria moon flower kind of detail in the real flower that is out there in the world. I love Alstroemeria. It's so pretty. Okay. So I've got those two pieces of leafery there, and I'm going to go ahead and nest this little flower. Now you could turn it a couple different ways. I'm going to turn it to where its stamens are going out that direction. Let's get a little piece of, I only want a little tiny piece of um, tape because I want room. I'm going to be nesting a lot of leafery under there, and I want some room. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Dawn just said, love using the lines. Yes, use the lines. It'll help give you some um, things to anchor your leafery off of. Okay, I've got this going right here. I also don't want to cover up so much of that yellow. So I'm just kind of noodling it around. Okay, digging it, loving it. Now, look at what we got going so far here in the card. We've got all this yellow. We've got this yellow here, so that's dragging our eye down a little bit. We've got all of the variations of the lilac, the medium, the dark, the light, and but look at the differences. Watercolored, stamped, two different techniques that gives us a lot of texture and dimension without a ton of height for the card. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start to nest some of this leafery around and see where I'm going to like it. So let's go ahead. Um, Sue just said, that's a good tip using the lines in the moon. Often I try to build in those little visual cues in my stamps to kind of give you 
um, elements to anchor off of. And that's one of those elements that I definitely um, built in for that reason. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little piece of leafery here. I like it kind of coming out. I love that variation of the two tones there. And I love that it's out over the edge of the little card um, layer here. So super cute. Um, Daisy Girl just said, if you use the more dotted detail on all the petals, it could be a smaller tiger lily. Absolutely. It could absolutely be a tiger lily. I love tiger lilies. I grow them. This year they didn't do so well, but it was a little warm, a little hot this summer. Okay, I've got this piece of leafery going here. I've got a leafery here, here. So I'm gonna start to try to create some whooshes of leafery that are kind of going up and around so that we start to get that shape and follow the shape of the crescent moon going up and around. I've got this piece. Now I'm gonna nest this one right here. So I'm following that line and getting that extra little bit of texture. Do, 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 do. Digging it. Okay. I'm gonna come under, there's two things. I could have come under the moon, but for this one, I'm gonna come under the Alstromeria or the little moon flower. And just kind of pop that up there. Loving that. Got all this kind of movement going on between the composition of this design. Dawn said, dahlias are blooming now. Yes, the dahlias. I've got some dahlias in my garden. They're not as not the huge honking dahlias because this is my first time growing them this year. So I've got some small ones. I've got this little piece um, of leafery that I'm just going to nest this way. So it feels like an extension of this piece where we have this piece of leafery that feels like an extension of that but it's, it's got all of that little wild movement going on. But I don't wanna cover up my, don't wanna cover up the work that I've done with the yellow. So I'm just coming underneath the moon. And I'm, I'm loving this right here, loving it. I've got this piece of leafery. Now, I don't wanna cover up my moon I kind of want it to go wild, like out this way. We've got all of this going on here. And then I want this other piece of wild leafery just kind of coming out here. But, and I'm not going to glue that down yet. I've got this beautiful, beautiful Luna Moth that I just want to kind of be part of the card here. So I'm going to have her nested up here. And then it's going to give me my room for my sentiment. When my sample, I really crowded everything out. Um, and my sentiment just kind of see how I crowded everything out a little bit by coming in. And I've got my sentiment here and it feels a little bit tight here. This design is a lot looser. So we've got some movement here. Then we've got this little offshoot that's kind of pointing to my Luna. So these, all these little design things that I'm sharing are just things that I think about when I'm creating my card. If I am, you know, trying to create a different kind of, try to use my stamps to the max, right? Stamps to the star of the show. I want to maximize their use. I'm pulling this piece of leafery down a little bit by creating a, a card that's just using the stamps. So getting my whole composition with the card, um, of the card, just using the stamps. And I'm always, that's why I love these layering kind of building stamps, because you can do some really easy techniques without taking forever to get your card done, right? So I'm going to nest this little Luna right under here, just the tip going to let her just kind of just kind of be this beautiful luna moth that she is and just kind of have her going up and off um so we've got all this movement going on here we've got this movement with the leafery we've got beautiful moonflower um and you're right sue so said it doesn't even need a sentiment and I tend to go sentiment free on a lot of my stamps. I mean, a lot of my cards. 
I'm going to add this little Just Breathe, and I think I'm going to nest it. I'm going to see. I think I just want to kind of nest it right there, just above, just kind of nested in with that little piece of leafery. The little piece of leafery is behind it, just a smidge. If I wanted it to be know, kind of like, mm, that's not bad. But I don't really want to cover up so much of my moon. So I'm just going to pop it right there. So it's got a connection. The sentiment has a connection with the Luna. And it has a connection with this piece of leafery. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add this in. Here's the other thing. Like this piece, when I was creating this concept, I want this to come off the edge here a little bit. So it breaks the design. So everything in the design of the the card uh, layer nothing is confined to it but it does give us a nice base to work on so I've got layers that are stamped on the base the moon you know the the galaxy of stars the leafery and I'm going to add a little bit more just a little bit more I'm going to go into the new beginning stamp set and I've got these stars that are a part of the galaxy. So let's just go ahead. We're gonna add a little bit more yellow. Bring a little more yellow into the card. I'm gonna take this little star and just kind of plunk it right there. And so that brings some of that galaxy down. And then I'm gonna take the little star, the little one, the wee little one, and just kind of pop it right here. So we've got a connection between the leafery and the stars and it's also bringing that yellow that's up here down and around a little bit. So we get more color. So much color going on here. We've got the cools, the cool lilac colors used two different ways. Straight up stamping with a little bit of that rock and roll, layering it onto that moon. The lines in the moon help give us a little bit of extra texture and dimension. We've used those colors right here. I'm gonna bring this up so you can start to see the blues coming out of that watercolor. We've got the cool spruce in the leaferies, the spruce family of colors. And then we're bringing in a little bit of warm colors with the wild dandelion um, yellow that just gives it a little bit of pop and we've got that jelly bean green that's a nice, cool, a warmer contrast to the cool leafery greens. And then we just add a little bit of magic to the top here with that Luna Moth. And, ah, oh, I'm just loving it. Absolutely loving it. Loving the way this card came out. Let's bring in, I'm going to bring in, like, here is the original. So you can see how, like, loving that we've got the Luna kind of whoosh going off the top in the composition of the card here right here i kind of nested her back there and she just kind of looked like she was plopped there here was the original inspiration to create the mashup so you can see i've got that um, moon here the little lines the little um ribbon that you could use we've got that leafery going on with that alstroemeria here was the alstroemeria watercolored Love it. Love it. I'm digging the way this card came out. Just digging it. It came out even better than I thought. Here, I did not resist the urge that much to make this a smoothie blend. And I actually ended up getting a water, like some pilled up water, which I'm digging this too. I love the way this came out. But this one is giving me all the joy because I've got a nice variation of color here with my lilac. I've got all of these things going on in this card, but as you can see, it didn't take forever to put it together, did it? It just was some straight up stamping, two different techniques using the same color, some really easy water coloring, and just some super, super fun. Just loving the way it came out, loving it. Okay, so mm, I am loving this card. I know I say that about every card that I share, 
in every video, like, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, but I think this might be my favorite out of all of the cards that I've done for this release so far. So couple things before we go, we're right, we're like five minutes within the hour. And I love that. Um, love being able to come in and do this live with you in an hour over your lunch break or maybe getting your morning started. Don't forget, there are two card idea sheets, downloads for the two new releases. The um, description to get them is in the, it's in the description, the link for that blog post where you can go ahead and download those uh, freebies are there in the description. And um, it's a gift of grace from me to you. And if you are interested and you're not a subscriber to my email list, you can subscribe to my email list. That link is down below in the description. I usually send three emails a month, three or four, and that the um, there are lots of people in here that are on my um, email list. That's where I also share when I'm going live, when I have new releases, when I have updates in my shop. Um, I give exclusive discounts to people on my email list that I don't share in social media. Um, a lot of things with social media is challenging because I never know if everybody's seeing the inspiration, but in my emails, I share all the inspiration. So you're, you're sure to get it um, and it'll pop in your email box. So if that's something that interests you, the link is down below in the description. Um, and yeah, so, okay. I'm also working on, and many of you know this, I'm also working on a big honking watercolor class soup to nuts watercolor class that'll be in my online classroom. And if you've never seen that, my online classroom is craftyourjoy.com. I have lots of, I have eight or nine or 10 watercolor classes in there. Um, we're doing different projects, but this big comprehensive watercolor class called watercolor wonderland that I'm working on, I've been working on it for months. It's gonna come out this fall, I'm just super excited. So if you're on my email list, you're gonna hear more and more about it and you've been hearing about it and there'll be an exclusive discount for that as well. Okay, so I will not be doing a live next week. It's my daughter's birthday next Friday, so special day. But I will, I'll either have another video that will be coming out next week or I'll definitely be doing a live the following week. So if you're on my email list, I'll be announcing it in there. I'll share it in social media. I have like 20 more cards using these, um, the new releases that I'll be sharing in social media as well. So if you follow me there, you'll see them. But um, I wanna wish everyone a wonderful weekend, wherever you are. I hope this tutorial has given you lots of inspiration to craft your joy into the weekend. And if you have any questions as a follow-up, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm the one that answers them and I'll be sure to get back to you. So there's a couple more questions. Can you do, yes, can you do, Gloria just asked, can you do a card with grow through next time? Yes, that's the plan. And the card will be using the abstract backgrounds with a couple really different fun techniques with those backgrounds. So that's coming, no worries. I know that everybody hasn't received this stamp, these stamp sets yet. These stamp sets are going out starting next week. So plenty of inspiration is coming. I've got you. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So have a great weekend. Thanks to everyone who's saying happy birthday to my daughter. Yes, she'll be 19. Holy smokes, 19. So um, just very excited for her. So no live next week, but there'll be a live the following week. And um, yeah, I'll be announcing when it is. It'll be on a Friday, of course, because that's when I usually do them. And we'll take it from there. So again, have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have some time to get out your supplies and um, craft your joy. So I'll see you next time. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks so much and have a great day.